All right, so how about in the winding up of the debate? What are the tips that my students should take note? Okay, thanks, Zara. So as we as we uh, start concluding this session, uh, uh, I'd like to emphasize on the students who will be debating soon that it's also important now to deliver the powerful closing. Uh, since the debate is about persuading the judges and the audience uh, to side with you or to consider your your uh, team as the winning um, has that, that your team has the winning arguments it is important also to now wrap up everything so the five minutes that the rebuttal speakers will be uh, giving are the crucial five minutes of the uh, closing section of the debate which can actually deliver the win, especially when it's in a tight contest, when both the affirmative and the negative are able to give strong arguments, equally strong arguments, the closing will play a, a very heavy role. Now, for the closing statement, uh, we usually choose the speaker who is more eloquent, <laughs> who is who can paint the picture better, uh, and who can use the different appeals that we showed earlier, the pathos, the ethos, and the, uh, uh, what, sorry, was that again? Uh, logos, logos, pathos, and ethos uh, in, in a five minute summation of the arguments. So for both sides, uh, it's crucial for both teams to be able to, first of all, summarize the main points of your arguments. Uh, and then you also need to be able to highlight now the clashes uh, where both teams uh, were able to uh, I mean, meet on some points. So for example, again, on the general case, uh, if the main point of contention is the lack or presence of command responsibility, you highlight that. Uh, you say that the affirmative side, say, say you're from the negative side, now you say the affirmative side failed to produce evidence that there is command responsibility, that there is superior subordinate relationship, which is an essential element. There has to be a sir and a subordinate relationship for them to be held liable for command responsibility. If you're able to point that out as your main argument, and then you're also able to point out that they were not able to establish that, that they were only making conjectures, they were only uh, making um, rationalizations or, or uh, uh, two thin conclusions on the relationship between the two groups, then you can establish that there, the affirmative side wasn't able to, to build up the case. Therefore, there is no reason for the judge to uh, vote in favor of them. Uh, so when you summarize your points, you highlight, their, you highlight the points of clashes, but more importantly, you show the weakness of their uh, argument as opposed to the arguments that you raised. And then uh, once you've highlighted that, always go back to the impact. What now? If you, if you win, if your argument wins, what is the impact of that to the bigger picture? So if, if you're arguing on the negative side that the, ge the general is not guilty, then you will be able to uh, say that uh, command responsibility Command responsibility's objective is to punish those who are guilty of an offense. But there are limitations. Much uh, that we commensurate with what happened in the barangay, uh, uh, the, the, the people in the barangay who were attacked. But the law exists to protect uh, both sides. Uh, there are rights that must be upheld. And if we uh, allow passion, if we allow emotion to take over, then justice will also be uh, unserved. If we are here to dispense justice, if we are here to make sure that both sides are given what is due them, then allowing the, the, the general to be persecuted for a crime uh, under, this, uh, under, under this presentation, we will also be doing him in injustice if we allow emotions so or if we allow the uh, uh, government side to present an emotional plea. Uh, but not following actually a legal argument. So if your side wins, what is, uh, how is it better than the other side uh, if, they, if, uh, if their argument wins? How is it better? 
So that's that's the that's bringing your impact to the argument. And then uh, uh, the last slide here is going back again to the picture that we showed earlier, where who paints the better picture? Who paints the better argument? Is it your side or is it their side? Your concluding statement, your powerful conclusion should be therefore um, our side wins because the merits of our arguments are far better than theirs, both on the logical side, the legal side, but also on the bigger impact side of things. So uh, you take the whole picture into perspective and you frame it in such a way that your argument is better and that's how you close with a remarkable uh, closing statement, a powerful but remarkable closing statement that will leave an imprint on the minds of the judges. So look at the picture again, make sure that you're the one on the right who was able to present a clearer image of the case. And from my standpoint, this guy on the right is something that I can point out from the crowd as against the other one on the left. That should be the impression that you leave the judges, that you have a better, stronger, and more persuasive argument than uh, the, op the opposing opposition. That's it, sir. All right, so thank you for that comprehensive and informative discussion on how to prepare for a debate. So any last inspiring words for my students, Kuyagar? Okay, uh, thanks, Zara. I hope I did justice to your class <laughs> by uh, sharing the experiences that we had uh, back in our law school days. Um, yeah, sige, words of inspiration. I guess uh, what's apt uh, in this time and age is as lawyers, as future lawyers, I'd like to encourage everyone to speak the truth. The debate is a forum for us to understand both sides more deeply, to see different perspectives. But in this day and age where there's a lot of misinformation, uh, disinformation, malinformation, it's important that as uh, lawyers, you be the bearers of light, you be the bearers of the truth. So in this exercise that you will do for your finals, let debate be an exercise of sharpening your analytical skills, deepening your learning of the law and your application of it. Um, may your experience lead to better tomorrows for all of us uh, in, in whatever field that you will play. I'd like to emphasize also that the purpose of the debate is again, it's not about making your ego big. It's actually about humbling yourself that you can accommodate other points of view and consider it not as wrong entirely, but just different and something that we can all benefit from with diversity of thoughts as we benefit from diversity of personalities as well. Let the debate also become a seedbed of progress because when we debate on points that really matter, we wake up from um, ignorances that we thought were truths. So one example of this is slavery. When people started talking about the rights of people to vote, the rights of people to, to equal opportunities, then we were able to improve on a better quality, a better living for everyone. So debate is not something that you should fear. It's something that you should, be, you should welcome uh, as an opportunity to see things more widely, see things and appreciate things more deeply. So good luck, uh, best of luck on your finals. I hope you enjoy the debate and I hope that this is the start of a fire or, or, or a spark that will uh, inspire you to become better lawyers and be the next generation of debaters and mooters of Xavier University Law School. Thank you, thank you, Zara. Again, thank you so much, Kuya Garrett, for gracing us with your presence, your knowledge and wisdom, and we hope to have you back again for our next podcast on mooting. So, I hope you'll say yes to that too. I'll, I'll be glad <laughs> to join you. Uh, since it's moot court, it's more of, a, more of a comfort zone for me. So, thank you, Sarah, for the invitation. Alright, thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. And I hope that this is the start of uh, a deeper or a... Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs>